Hi guys, welcome back to Afropop Entertainment News and it's been quite a while. So as you can see, Era Star and Crayon and Rema showed up at a club and I'm starting to think that Era is dating Crayon because the two of them like hanging out together and recently Era was hanging out with Rema's girlfriend, Justin, and I think that now Rema is hanging out with Era's boyfriend, Crayon. So maybe this is under undercover. Let me know what you think about this, but I honestly think that these two might be dating because they really hung out a lot and then they had that reason. They've had several collabs and there was the recent one. I don't know if you've heard it, that song called Ngozi. And it's quite a hit. I feel like these two people, they have chemistry. Rema and, not Rema, Aira and Crayon. Anyway, moving on. Steph London is coming to South Africa. She has released a song with Major League DJs. And I'm quite impressed. These people, they're such good DJs. And it's about time they started getting more collabs. And speaking of South Africa, Tyler has revealed that her album is coming next week on Friday. And she also released some snippets and said that she was going to do a collab with Blackpink. So what do you think about this? Blackpink is such a huge band in Asia. And I think that as far as moves are concerned, Tyler is being very smart. And I can't wait to listen to that album. I'm also excited to hear the collab between her and Blackpink. Tell me what you think about this so far. I think that the song between Tyler and Blackpink will be a hit song because they're both talented. And honestly, I heard the snippet and I liked it. So I hope it's not one of those songs where the snippet is the best part of the song and then everything else is just going to be underwhelming. I'm so excited for Tyler's album. I'm a huge fan of Tyler. I think she's really talented. So I just hope that this song between her and Blackpink, actually it's not the entire band, it's one of the members called Lisa. I hope it's going to be a hit. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Do you think that Tyler is being is deviating from the African scene? Anyway, Burna Boy has really been getting some backlash. People are saying he's rude to his employees. Check out this video where one of his employees, his stylist, seemed so frustrated because either Burner Boy didn't want him to be on the stage with him and rectify some mistake in his dressing, or there's a time when Burner Boy wanted to throw a jacket and the stylist did not want Burner Boy to throw a jacket. It seemed like the guy was so frustrated, honestly. I don't know what's going on between them. Some people are saying that the stylist is the one on the wrong, and other people are saying that Burner Boy is rude to his employees. Please look at the video and let me know what it looks like to you. In my opinion, I can't tell. I really can't tell because Banaboy is the type of person who seems like he can be intimidating. But also, I feel like the stylist was overdoing it. Why are you on stage when <laughs> he's performing? Anyway, moving on. So as you've heard, Kaisenat was in Nigeria and oh my god, he really seems to have had so much fun. He went on a ride with, with Davido in his luxury vehicles. He was treated almost like a king. It was quite nice actually and he seemed to have had fun. Well, the main point of this video is there's a time when Davido was with Kai on their vehicle and he was showing Kai Omale's music. Just take a look. Hey, listen to this. This is Omale. Oh, yeah. Omale. Shortly after Omale said that he always thought Davido hated him and I thought that was strange like where did that thought come from why did you even share it like what's the point you know i'm a huge fan of omale i'm a huge fan of davido i just don't understand what omale is trying to do here you know currently davido is really facing a lot of what should i call it not backlash but resistance from people who don't really want to give him credit for his role in afrobeats so i feel like he doesn't need any more negative press and omale is saying he thought davido always hated him first of all hate is such a strong word i just wish he could have backed it up like can you tell us why you think he hated you and i i just don't understand the point but i'm glad to see that davido showed him love and clearly there is no hate here so i think omale was just 
he was reading the wrong signals or maybe someone was coming in between them and reporting the wrong things speaking of afrobeats afrobeats king with kid went on an online rant and honestly he sounded angry and he was saying how he is no longer an afrobeats artist and he's releasing a new album which people who love afrobeats should not listen to that album because he's not an afrobeats artist so i'm going to post up those rants here he did them on his instagram stories i'm sure if you check them right now you'll see and I'm saying they're angry because he was really using such cursive language. He was calling people, you know, all those cursive things. I don't want to get shadow banned or something. And I was just wondering, like, bro, you can just communicate whatever you want to say without calling people names. You know, I am just a fan. I don't want to hear you saying all these things you're saying. Like, why are you calling us? All these things you're calling us. Just say whatever you want to say and go, you know. Like, why? What's with all the angry words? But, you know, this kid is going through a hard time after he lost his mom. So I guess... He has a huge fan base, a cultic fan base. People might go easy on him and understand him. I'm looking forward to hearing that album and seeing what he's trying to say. I hope it's not a reggae album. <laughs> but you know what? He's an artist, so maybe he doesn't want to be put in a box and we can respect that. Please let me know what you also think about this. And moving on to East Africa, well, Kenyan singer Viri went on his Instagram stories and he called out the religious institutions in Kenya. And he basically said that he does not understand why they do not really help people because I feel like religion has become so much of a profitable business. It's just a business. So he was just saying that there needs to be like a legislation or a policy that makes people in the religious sector have a school, an orphanage, you know, something to give back to the society because that is what Christianity, Islam and all these religions are supposed to be about. But with the time, it has become like a business. And honestly, it's kind of like a shameless business. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. So this is what he had to say. Can we pass a bill that assures every religious institute provides free school, orphanages, or even a shelter for the homeless and have a sanitary products donation bank? What do you think about this? I actually really support it. I feel like religious institutions all over the world should be regulated and they should do what they're supposed to do and the business aspect should not be there there is even a kenyan preacher who was recorded saying he was given less i don't know if it was tithe or offerings than he thought he deserved and he was genuinely angry so <laughs> you know when it gets to that point where someone can just be so bold about it it's like yo you people need to be regulated someone needs to come in and regulate this thing so I agree with Nviri, though it's a very touchy subject, you know, religion has its, it, it also has a cultic base, so you can't just come in there and say anything, people will really get angry, so I'm glad someone said it, honestly. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Do you think that musicians like Nviri should keep quiet about such political topics? Do you think it can interfere with his musical growth? Moving on to Tanzania, our girl Zuchu got banned from Zanzibar because she sang a song that the Zanzibar government found very, what would I say, immoral, <laughs> and she issued an apology. But aside from that, she also later on removed everything from her Instagram account, and fans are saying that Zushu and her boyfriend, Diamond Platinums, have resorted to cheap, cheap tactics to gain clout, and it's making them seem less respectable as artists, given that they're very talented. So I have to agree with that. I actually dislike how they keep using their relationship, keep telling people we've broken up, we've not broken up. It's even lost taste. People don't even cover it anymore. People don't even care. Because it's clearly a cheap publicity stunt, and you two are so talented, Zushu and, and Diamond are so talented. I actually get so embarrassed when I see them doing that. I'm like, you don't have to do this. You people are so talented, you can just sing. Just do your music. People love you for your music. When you start doing such cheap publicity stunts, it's lame. Moving to South Africa, so Casper has got baptized recently and turns out that he's getting married and fans were shook because he had this baby mama who people always thought he would get married to, but he ended up leaving her for his childhood friend. Listen to what people had to say. So meet Pulane Mujaki, who will tie the knot with Casper this coming Saturday the 16th. And then Mr. Tooth was saying Casper is going to marry Pulane who friendzone him. In his childhood, if he didn't have money, she wouldn't marry him. Moral of the story, never ever date a lady based on affordability. If she can't date you at your lowest, she doesn't deserve you at your highest. Okay, Mr. Tooth. I feel like Casper knows what he's doing. There's a reason why this woman has been his childhood friend. And someone else was saying Casper is getting married to his childhood friend who, who's from Mahikeng on the 16th of March after breaking up with his baby mama. Anyway, that's all for today. Bye, guys. Bye.